Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Dais, a podcast about the stories taking place in and around El Paso County, Colorado. As always, I'm your host, Scott Anderson, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Stephen Lewis, the president and CEO for the Community Partnership for Child Development. How are you doing today, Stephen? I'm doing great, Scott. It's good to see you, and I'm glad to be in your presence. Great, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate being here. Uh, So before we get started, I want to add that if listeners are interested in more stories about people doing good in and around El Paso County or hearing from county leadership about local government priorities and how they operate, you can find additional episodes of this podcast on your podcast platform of choice. All right, though, Stephen, let's get into it. Can you start by sharing a bit of background about yourself and how you came to be associated with the Community Partnership for Child Development? Well, I would have to take you back about 25 years. Uh, I nearly have 25 years of experience in Head Start. I was fortunate enough to start my career in my home native town of Baltimore, Maryland. I worked in my first Head Start program, Union Baptist Head Start, in 2000. And when I came in, I had no idea what Head Start really was, Mm -hmm. how large it was, what it really meant, Um, historical perspective. I was working on my master's social work. And to be honest with you, it was really to pass time. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, this would be a cool job. I started out as a family service coordinator. I had about 50 families I was responsible for, making sure the child health was in place, their physicals, their dentals, and and dealing with the families. And I thought that was a groovy thing to do while I was in school. Lo and behold, I started to learn more about Head Start. I realized the reach of it, and I liked it. Um, I stayed there for 24 months, and then I became a supervisor, and I really liked it. And I said, wow, I could really, I think I can do well here. And um, lo and behold, I became a director in Baltimore at the time. I was very young. I think I was around 29 at the time, maybe the youngest of at that time. Mm -hmm. And I worked for St. Vincent de Paul. I did that job for four years. Now, it's no disrespect to Community Partnership for Child Development, but when I was at St. Vincent de Paul, my first directorship, that was the best job I've ever had. And here's why. Because that's when I knew that I could do this leadership thing. I was just totally fascinated about it. I was a sponge. I wanted to learn everything I could about leading people and being there for the most vulnerable. And I really fell in love with that. That was my moment of this is what I want to do for the rest of my career. So at that point, four years in, I said to myself, I'm going to go to another level. But I realized because the way Head Starts were structured, you would have to cash your net throughout the United States to try to find the right opportunity that you thought you fit for. And that was Montgomery County Head Start in Norristown, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia. So I did that job. I took my game to another level. I did that job for five years. And then I stepped away for eight years to be a nonprofit consultant. And that really shaped my thinking around strategy development, helping organizations go beyond their reach and help with funding and team building, leadership stuff. Then I said, you know what? I don't know if this is my true skill set. My true skill set is leading. Mm -hmm. So I put my name back out in the force, and I was lucky enough to become the grantee director of Mid-America Regional Council in Kansas City. Did that job for two and a half years. I was very happy in my job, and this job here in Colorado Springs came up. I know the predecessor because we was a part of a mentor-mentee program, and we was on a session online because of COVID. And I was saying, I'm getting a little restless, a little bored. <laughs> I want to do something bigger than what I think I can do. And she said, well, I'm ready to retire. She said, I have nothing to do with hiring, but you should throw your name in the hat. And I said, really? Colorado Springs? Okay, okay. <laughs> you know. Now, you got granted, I started out in the urban environments, you know, core cities. I thought that I was being trained to operate in core urban environments. I know silly as that sound, but I, I thought that. But it's funny because here it is. I've had the opportunity to work in the East Coast, Midwest, now Southwest. Some would say Midwest. I can classify Southwest a little bit. And I said, wow, now I'm being developed to deal with all communities, rural communities, urban, suburban. And it just, I'm so thankful for that opportunity because it allowed me to say, you're not a leader of a segment. 
you're a leader of all segments, the melting pot. And so I threw my name in the hat, and lo and behold, I was lucky enough. And I mean lucky and privileged. It's a privilege and an honor to sit in the seat and be named president here. And I don't take that for granted by no means. And that's how I ended up here at Colorado Springs. Yeah. And it's fascinating because all my experience up to this point has built me and shaped me to do this. Yeah. Without all those experiences, you wouldn't meet me, Scott. Right. right. So, and, and me being a former athlete years ago, it allowed me to understand teamwork and team and work with anybody on the planet. I really believe I bring that skill set. But more importantly, children and family suffer the same way in poverty anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. It may be more visible in other places, more invisible in other places. But the reality is the framework don't change. Yeah. And it's servitude of leadership that I like to expound upon and, and really shape that. And I'm honored to be here. You know what I mean? It's a blessing yeah. to be able to serve the people. Yeah, no, that that's a that's a really great backstory. I, I really like hearing stories like that. And uh, the way you described it really, like, it's, it's really fascinating, like, how you talk about how, you know, you, you think it, you start, you thinking you're going to be in this yeah. in urban areas the whole time. No but, doubt about it. But, it. but it's really just shaping you to have sort of, now experience in everything and now Absolutely. now you can do it all. Absolutely. Oh, that's, and, and, that's really it's cool. just it's unbelievable to me. A kid from those steps in East Baltimore, yeah, you know, had no mind of ever seeing I you know, Colorado, I didn't know that was in the United States of America, you know, during that time. But right. it's it's fascinating to me now where I'm at in life. I'm fifty one years old and, and I say to myself, Wow, what an experience to leave your hometown. Mm -hmm. What an opportunity it is to get exposure and deal with all people of all walks of life. Yeah. And I'm just flabbergasted. And, I, and again, I say it as an honor to be able to serve on behalf of any creed, any race uh, across the United States. And I'm thankful for that experience. Oh, that, that's really great. Um, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Uh, so can you share some more background about the Community Partnership for Child Development itself yes. and uh, what the main mission of the organization is? In a nutshell, our mission is to serve the needy of the neediest, the vulnerable the vulnerable, uh, the under-resourced, marginalized communities throughout the whole entire El Paso County. Unfortunately, we serve up to only about 1,500, zero to five. We have early Head Start, which is zero to three. Head Start is zero to five, and we have universal pre-K. And in that mix, what's beautiful about Head Start, it goes unnoticed sometimes, but I have to say this. We just don't work with the child. We work with the whole entire family. That family comes in here. We say prosperity to all. We create the conditions where if that parent or parents need a GED, want to go back to school, want to go to a welding program, want to be a medical assistant, we help them through what's called a two-generational approach program that we coordinate with Pikes Peak State College to do that. And we look at the whole family as a unit. We don't, we don't parse out just the child's needs. We believe that if the parents are developed where they need to be, if they choose to, their kid is only going to progress. Now, if you look at the indexes of word buildup in language, there's a 30 million word deficit among upper and middle income families versus lower income families, the core group that we serve. 30 million word difference. So anything that we can do to enhance the literacy enrichment of that child and that family, mm -hmm. we will do. And I just love that component that we have. We have what's called family advocates that work and assign to parents. And it's just amazing, man, you know, how – and we'll talk more about when we get to the specifics around what has the program done in mm -hmm. a story context, yeah. and I will hit that when it's time. But um, comprehensive program. That's that's very cool. And so you said about 1,500 children. Correct between the ages of zero and five. How do, how do people first get introduced to the program? Word of mouth. Yeah. Um, we're strong with that. That's mm -hmm. our number one seller. You can go to our website at www.cpcdheadstart.org. Again, www.cpcdheadstart.org. We have a whole outreach community relations team that we, we canvass the areas throughout the whole, our Paso counties and our needs of interest, and we market it. 
mm-hmm. guerrilla marketing, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And we try to find the folk that fit for us. But it's usually word of mouth. We claim to be that good that we got repeat customers. Yeah. And repeat customers get new customers for us. Because we, we're honest about this. We want to stop it at one generation if we can. Right. We're honest about that because we want them to reach a level of prosperity where this don't become a situation as a permanency of an underclass that we're working with, respectfully. Yeah. We want them to grow and develop. Okay. But our reach is the whole entire Paso County. We work within six school districts. We partner with them. We partner with Pikes Peak State College, um, Catholic Charities. And we cross, we got a big span all the way to Falcon, the Fountain. Territory is wide. Yeah. It's very wide. Yeah. yeah. So can you talk about then, and I think when you're talking about word of mouth, I mean, that's such a valuable way to market. Right. But can you talk about how important it is for the organization to be viewed then as a place that the community can turn to Absolutely. in their time of need? Absolutely. And I think that that's the crude call of what we ultimately want to be. When we look at partners like El Paso County, Colorado, they have the program called CCAP that we cross in those angles. Our parents sometimes are duplicate service oriented people with those entities Catholic Charities, United Way. It's in our name when you think of community partnerships, yeah. right? Yeah. So we kind of, we look for those strategic opportunities that's going to make strength and synergy around opportunities that's going to benefit our children and families that we serve. Think about it. We partner with six school districts. 95% of those children are going to be going to those schools. Yeah. So we are the bridge for that development to carry on in that particular school district that we are currently serving children in. Mm-hmm. Oh, that that's that's fascinating, and I, I think one of the things too, uh, when we talk about you know again just uh, having a place where people feel comfortable going, no question about I, it. I mean, and we make it welcome. We hope we hope you were welcome when you came in here, Scott. Yeah, no, a- absolutely, and I think you know that again that just goes back to the word of mouth, right? Like people aren't going to recommend a place that they don't feel comfortable at, no that they don't feel valued at. No way. I wish I had one of my parents here to testify. To yeah. some of this stuff because they are the they our customers are our best value, yeah. right? They yeah. create our value, so they will tell you most of them what they didn't know coming in and what they knew going out. Right. For instance, IEP individual education plan. If you are a parent to have that situation with your child, we educate you on the laws. We make sure you're never silent when your child transfers to the public schools. And you have a right to know X, Y, and Z. We educate them yeah. on, to be an ambassador for their own child so they'll be empowered to question things, critically point things out that relate to their child that can harm or help their child. Yeah. So we, we, we like to cause, we like, we have what's called a policy council, and it's filled with parents. And it's like my board of directors outside of my board of directors. <laughs> and I call them ambassadors for the organization because they, get to the policy council through the parent committees of their respective cluster that they come from. They're voted in. So okay. that's a proud moment for them, right? Yeah. It's empowering for them. They're like, wow, my peers voted me in. This must mean something. And we go through the Robert rules, how you orchestrate and, and work within committees and sit on the board. And then they become our professionally with a stamp of approval that can go on their resume. Yeah. So that's, that's a value add. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's really great. So I want to transition to uh, some of the, some of the grant funding that you receive from yep. El Paso County. So uh, after submitting your grant request to the County, the community partnership for child development was awarded $110,000 of ARPA funding. Uh, can you talk about what that money has gone to fund? First, Scott, I want to thank El Paso County. Uh, Colorado for thinking of us in a way that we could be afforded the funds that we received from you. So we're thankful for that. What those funds did for us was actually fill a full person behavioral health consultant, right? We have a unique business model here where we have people internally that we contract with the school districts to provide speech, behavior, Okay. Services. Yeah. It's usually the other way around. Yeah. Yes. But on team. So that one ten helped fund that quality. Yeah. Now here's the big kicker. They're trained in that stable from bachelor's all the way to PhD. So with those funds, we were able to get and keep 
the highest trained possible human beings Man. for the delivery of the children who so deserve the best talent possibly yeah. to help mend their needs. That's what those funds did for CPCD. Now, and, and that's really incredible because I, I think as every organization experienced during the pandemic, keeping talent was, oh, yeah. was really difficult. No question about it. And so being able to use funds to not only keep talent, but to advance talent. No question. And to invest in that talent. I think really speaks speaks a lot about just the priorities of your organization, Correct. and and I, I think you know if if I'm a member of this of this organization and think, you know, they're willing to invest in me in my future, that's a place I want to stay, I want to be, and be an ambassador for myself. No question about. So it. I think being able to do that with those funds is really incredible, right. and I think again speaks highly of the type of organization that this is. Yep, so that's, that's, that's what we do, and no, and without those funding. We might have to lay some folk off. Right, right. We shape, we reorg. Yeah. Our department there. And who suffers? Children and family. Because right. their service needs them to stop. Yeah. They don't stop. Yeah. Yeah, they, they need it whether you have the money Correct. to provide for it or not. Right? Yeah. Um, no, that, that's really great. So how ha you've mentioned a, a couple of different organizations that you work with in the community. Correct. How do they really benefit the programs that you guys are working on? I just use our school districts. For example, that 30 million word gap, we close. So the time they get there, they're kindergarten ready. I can go in most of these school districts and tell you which kids didn't have his thought. Socially, emotionally, they know how to pass a toy appropriately. Mm -hmm. They can process better. They can deregulate their brain so they can understand how to get through conflict resolution at their age. Yeah. Their behaviors are intact. See, we deal with all that in Head Start because we have a scientific curriculum that we go through. And that's how the school districts benefit. Those kids get there ready to learn. They don't have to go back to the remediation period of making sure Johnny sits in his chair, that type of thing. Right. And so they're ready to learn. That's one way they benefit. Let's look at the parents, how they benefit. If they come in and use some of our two-generational programming, they, come, they become more empowered, tax-paying citizens. Quality of life goes up. They feel a sense of pride, dignity, respect, and prosperity for themselves. Mm -hmm. So you benefit twofold from that. And I think what's really nice about how you're describing that of parents, I mean, I, I've, I've got kids, right? So I have an idea of what I want to pass on to my kids. Correct. And when you feel empowered as a parent, when you feel powerful as a parent, yep. intelligent as a parent, yep. Yep. and being able to pass those type of things on to your children, I mean, it's infectious, right? Like, yep. then they will pick that up and feel empowered themselves, feel good about where they are, making decisions, and being where they're at. So, Scott, I like to use this analogy. Yeah. Because you brought it up. I have never seen a five-year-old take themselves in a bank and deposit $100 <laughs> by themselves and walk out with a deposit slip and the customer tell us, say, thank you, sir or ma'am. Never seen this. Scott, have you seen this? <laughs> Let me know. And then we can shut this part of the conversation down. But I've just never seen it. Yeah. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that specifically because that's one of those things that actually – my wife and I are trying to teach our kids, you know, we're, we're trying to teach them that kind of stuff. And you know, it's, I, it's still a long, long way to go, long way to go for Tell me, me, about me and my kids. But um, no, like it is like learning those skills is not something that you inherently have. And being parents, you don't inherently have skills to know how to raise kids. Right. It, you, you learn on the fly. And so when you're able to find places that allow you that, opportunity to grow as parents and as people and as residents of, of a location like here in El Paso County. Um, I mean, it's not just you that benefits, right? And I think that's a lot of what you're talking about. It's, it's you that benefits, your children benefit, the community benefits. Um, is there a personal story you can share that can kind of help people uh, get an idea for what the organization really does? Yes, there are many, but this one pops out. This was in the 
summertime, end of the year, we had what's called end of year picnics. Okay. For very now, you got to keep in mind we're twenty seven different locations. <laughs> okay. And I have programs underneath us in the basement, so I said I got to at least go to one. So I went to the end of year picnic right out here out back, and a young lady came up to me, a parent. She said, "You're Mr. Lewis." I said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, I want to thank you for this program. I said, oh, no, it's awful. You said, no, you don't understand. Nine months ago, I was homeless, sleeping in my car with my children. And someone told me about early head start at CPC. She didn't know what it was, mm. where it was. And she followed what this person was telling her, and she came by and, and told our family advocate her situation. We enrolled that child, fed that child, and we made sure she got what she needed. This woman now has her own apartment, a job, all on the basis of utilizing the resources that CPCD has offered. And she was so prideful and happy and joyful and thankful on where she was and where she is now mm. in life. Yeah. And I think that is the punctuation of ROI, return on investment, that the dollars coming from El Paso County, Colorado, and others that we're thankful for was able to do for that family. That's just one yeah. example. Yeah, one of. We just got, we just, our ask event, young lady was doing a, um, she was part of the Q&A for us. She was a Head Start child. She's a medical doctor at Casa Paramente. So the story goes on and on and on. We have some incredible stories. But that one sticks out to me the most. And it, it was just moving for me. Yeah. On, wow, I'm, I'm a part of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Indirectly or not, or directly rather. Yeah. It's just powerful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And God, I, I think that does such a really great job of illustrating a point that when you have kids, that's that's what you're thinking about. You're worried about their welfare. Are they fed? Are they safe? Correct. And until that is met, it's hard for you to no, you worry can't. about yourself, right? No, no. And so th this individual, I, and, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like, you know, once she was in a position where her kids' needs were being met, then she would, now she's able to address her needs and get herself in a better situation because of that. Maslow hierarchy needs. Yeah. Food shelter has to come first. Yeah. Without that, you're traumatized. Your mental health mm -hmm. starts to slip, and a whole lot of things can happen. Yeah. But she held on. That's great. Yeah. That's great, man. Thanks for thank you for sharing that. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Uh, so, we talked. You talked about a, a couple of different programs that exist here. Are there any other programs that the organization offers that you? feel would be important for listeners to know about. Yes. Even for yourself, Scott, pass the word. We're always taking in good volunteers such as yourself to share your expertise, your time with us. We have what's called in-kind reciprocity. Whatever you would like to donate in time, we get to contribute that to our overall 25% match that we have to do for most of our funding. And I think that's a great way for people who want to give their time back to something of a worthy cause. Mm -hmm. CPCD doors are open to you. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So for those people who are seeking services, yes. right, that, that want that want to be involved, want to get involved, uh, how can they go about obtaining those services? I know you mentioned the website, website earlier. Yep, yep, yep. And I'll give you a number, too. Oh, great. Our number here is 719-635-1536. You can always ask for our volunteer department. Great. Yeah. So, I mean, again, thank you, Stephen, for taking the time today. It's really great to come out here, really great to hear about what's going on in the community and how, you know, for someone in my position to really understand how grant money is being spent, how organizations are being responsible with taxpayer money. That's right. I mean, I, I think it's important for people to know about and, and for them to see, you know, these are benef these are programs that can benefit maybe them, maybe somebody they know. Correct. You know, you know ev everybody knows somebody who can benefit from help. You know, Scott, I'd like to say this before we conclude. Yeah. You brought up something. If you are a tax-paying citizen in El Paso County and you look at your pay stubs and FICA, yeah. 
I tell people all the time, you are a shareholder of CPCD, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and you should know how your dollars are being spent. Yeah. They should. And yeah. we are a public entity, nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Happen to see some federal funding, but we are a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And we're public. You can go right on our website, see our 990. You can see how the money's being spent. You're a shareholder. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. I, li- I like how you put that. That's really great. Um, well, again, yeah, again, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate you having me here and for all the work that you do here at the Community Partnership for Child Development. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Scott. It was a pleasure being with you. If you are interested in listening to additional episodes of Beyond the Dais, be sure to look for us on Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. 